Hey guys, it's me, Jaime. So, I'm a registered respiratory therapist here in Houston, Texas, and I've heard that there's a few acute care nurses who are asking to step into the role of critical care nurse. So, I've seen on some of the healthcare forums that these nurses are asking for kind of tips and tricks about how to manage the ventilator. They've never managed a ventilator, or they've never um, had a intubated patient before, so I've kind of made a table of things, you know, tips and tricks, kind of a cheat sheet for introduction, an introduction to mechanical ventilation alarms for a new critical care nurse, no matter what your previous role was, okay? So, I want to focus mainly on the mechanical ventilation alarms because those are the things that are going to ring on the mechanical ventilator and you would go in and respond to that as a bedside nurse, okay? So, we have, um, I'm just going to list them out in order of like different types of alarms, just like you set your monitor alarms for heart rate, high heart rate, low heart rate, high oxygen sat, low oxygen sat, we set the same alarms, high peak pressures, high minute ventilation, low minute ventilation, high tidal volume, low tidal volume, high respiratory rate, low respiratory rate, we set the same types of alarms, okay? So, with that being said, we have different alarms. So if the high peak inspiratory pressure alarm is ringing, AKA peak pressure, AKA um, high PIP levels. So depending on the vent, I'm trying to keep it as general as possible. So when you have that alarm, the most common acute causes are coughing, patients just coughing, mucus plugging, bronchospasming, or possible tension pneumothorax, less common, atelectasis, moderately common. So for coughing, what you would do, just suction the patient, most likely they're coughing because they have mucus, maybe possibly even blocking their ET tube, right? So the mucus plug would actually be mucus blocking their ET tube. So then what do you do? You call the RT, the RT comes in, we do what's called a bronchoalveolar lavage, and we flush one to two cc's of saline down the ET tube um, in order just to kind of loosen what's stuck at the bottom of the ET tube. And um, you can also ask your RT, hey, can you show me how to do it? And it's at their discretion if they're comfortable with you doing it, especially as a new nurse. Uh, but that's how we would do that. Get out the mucus plugs that are blocking the ET tube, obstructing that, which can cause the high inspiratory pressure alarm to go off, okay? Bronchospasm, auscultate your patient. Listen to them, how, does their, how do their breath sound sound? If they sound like they're wheezing, call us. We'll go give a NEB treatment to help open up the lungs, okay? So, another acute cause, tension pneumothorax. When you auscultate the patient, you'll hear absent or severely diminished breath sounds on one side, maybe both sides. Uh, just make sure that they're equal breath sounds. If they're not, then that may warrant a ABG and a chest X-ray. So call the RT, come over, assess, call the physician team. You know, you just kind of start going down the list of who to call next, right? If you hear absent breath sounds on one side. The, another acute cause would be atelectasis. So atelectasis is like an acute lung collapse, right? So if you have that, you also auscultate. Listen to the patient's lungs, make sure they're equal, breath sounds on both sides. If not, one is severely diminished or absent breath sounds on one side, you may also have atelectasis. The only way to determine what it is, is get a chest x-ray. So then you talk to the RT, talk to the physician team, get a chest x-ray, okay? And find out um, which one it actually is. So a more gradual, gradual kind of causes that aren't super acute that might happen over a shift, maybe like six, seven hours into a shift, you'll start noticing little things um, on the peak inspiratory pressure kind of going up, up, up. Might be like a development of a pleural effusion, which is fluid on the outside of the lung, but inside the chest cavity. So that starts causing pressure, pushing the lung down, causing the lung to collapse because of the fluid buildup. So you have that, it's also the same thing. Auscultate, make sure breast sounds are equal on both sides. If not, one is severely diminished or absent, get a chest x-ray, okay? Same thing. Um, also, another gradual cause would be just over time gra gradually worsening pneumonia, right? So their pneumonia is worsening. 
their ARDS is getting worse, right? So what do you do? Auscultate, you're probably going to hear a lot of mucus, maybe some wheezes, you're going to hear like the ronchi, all of those types of things, coarse, coarse breath sounds. Maybe it's going to be worse in your afternoon rounds versus the morning when you listen to the patient, you're like, oh, it's just getting worse. Right. So then what do you do? You get a chest x-ray and then you, you know, you call the RT, you call the physician team, you get a chest x-ray, you guys look at the chest x-ray and then you modify your treatment plan from there. What do we need to do? Change vent settings. We need to increase or optimize vent settings. We need to increase or optimize um, respiratory therapies that we would, you know, fulfill. So those are the things that you would do kind of in your differential. So there's some other alarms we have. I've bunched them together because a lot of their common acute causes can be related. You know, the same alarms would be ringing for the similar reasons, right? So high minute ventilation, high respiratory rate, and high tidal volume alarms. If one, two, or three of these alarms are all ringing, either simultaneously or separately, doesn't matter, they can indicate similar things, okay? So you look at your patient, high respiratory rate, what is that? Tachypnea, right? So your patient's tachypnic. Your patient is short of breath. Your patient has some anxiety, right? Most patients would be pretty anxious being intubated in the hospital if they're awake. Uh, pain levels, uh, possible brain injuries while they're in the hospital, um, stroke, CVA, we call this neuro breathing. So you have all of these alarms going off for like high, high, high volumes, high respiratory rate, all these things. So what do you do? What do you do when these alarms are going off? You go in, you assess the patient, look at your patient, always look at your patient, right? PPE first though, 100%, always PPE first. Walk in, look at your vital signs, look at your patient, auscultate the patient, right? Call the RT, you know, and then what are your treatment options? So for tachypnea and shortness of breath, usually these are probably hand in hand. What do you do? You suction, you call RT, you, you know, get an ABG, you go get the results, you contact the physician team with the results if they're, you know, so-so kind of declining results, right? Not optimal results. And then what? You get a chest x-ray. And then what? You decide what you're going to do about the vent. You decide, okay, this patient is breathing fast, why? This patient is short of breath, why? We're not giving an event support. We need to increase the respiratory rate. We need to give more assisted mechanical breaths. So you do all those things. Okay, what else about the chest x-ray? Do we need to give more bronchodilators? How does the patient sound? Um, we need to increase CPT. We need to increase IPV levels. We need to increase, uh, possibly change the vent mode altogether from volume control to pressure control, from pressure control to by level we need to increase PEEP, we need to prone the patient, okay? We need to increase what we're doing to maximize their optimal vent settings um, and maximize their uh, vitals and oxygenation um, for them to have a better outcome, right? So all of those things. Um, if they're having anxiety, talk to the physician team you know, give them some medication to help them relax, kind of be a little more in a comfortable state. Uh, if they're having pain, give pain medication. That can also be like an indicative uh, sign when they're like tachypnic, they have shortness of breath, they're probably in pain, they're tachycardic, they're probably in pain. Okay, so then give pain medication. Now, the brain injuries, possible stroke, CVA, neuro breathing one. You know, you assess your patient if they're awake and they're acting different than they were in the in the morning. They, they were acting one way in the morning. Now they're kind of acting different. They're kind of just not really there, you know. So do all the same things. Get an ABG. Are we not giving them enough vent support, you know, and kind of go from there. Are they asynchronous, asynchrony uh, breathing with the vent? They're not synchronizing with the vent well, right? that irregular breathing patterns, right? So then we, what would you do? You get a CT scan of the head, okay? So those are the things that you can do if it's a pos if you're suspecting like a possible brain injury, right? So the alarm that I particularly want to point out to any new, you know, critical care nurse coming into the ICU would be the leak or disconnection or low tidal volume or low minute ventilation alarm. So 
If any of these four alarms are going off, they're ringing for a reason. These are not the alarms that you ignore. These are the alarms that you put your PPE on first 100% all the time. Then you go in and assess the patient. This is not an alarm where you just wait for the patient to stop coughing. This is an alarm where you have to dress up, PPE on, go into the room, assess the vent, assess the patient, and see what's going on. So common acute causes, audible cuff leak. There's a cuff at the end of the endotracheal tube that we inflate with air. Sometimes, you know, with time, it starts to deflate, right? Just over time, because it's air. And you just call us, call RT, we'll come in and we will gladly reinflate the cuff to the appropriate pressure levels. So what you're going to hear, you're going to hear an audible cuff leak coming. It's going to sound like the patient is gargling out of their mouth. You know, oh, it's going to sound like that, right? Because the cuff's deflated, some of the air is coming back up out of their mouth. You'll hear that. That's usually, you know, 80, 85, 90% of the time, it's because of an audible cuff leak. It's easy fix nothing to really worry about, but you have to call us so we can fix it in a timely manner, okay? So there's that. Another thing would be the temperature probe. So we have temperature probes attached to the ventilator circuits in multiple locations, and sometimes they come loose or come out. So that means the patient is getting significantly less volume delivered to their lungs because it's going out through this leak um, from the temperature probe being you know, loose or disconnected. So you need to call us. You can go in there if you want. You can like put your PPE on, walk into the room and assess the patient and see if you can find where the temperature probe is. If that's the case, feel free to, you know, put the temperature probe back where it goes or ask your respiratory therapist ahead of time. Hey, where's the temperature probes? Where is it supposed to go? You know, so you can you can know what to do in that situation. If not, patients deciding you can't find where the disconnection is, um, I would say bag your patient. Better have PPE on if you're going to bag a COVID-19 patient. Better have PPE on, okay? So call us, we'll go in, we'll put our PPE on, we'll go in, we'll reconnect whatever got disconnected, okay? So temperature probe, option two, right? Option three. So if you have any of these alarms on a low level, low level ringing uh, alarms, option three is the vent plain old disconnection, not from a temperature probe, just actually ET tube came disconnected. What do you do? You just reconnect it, okay? Reconnect it back to the patient. Boom, patient starts breathing again. Wow, you saved their life, right? So you can go home, feel really good about yourself that day. So. That's how you would fix that, right? Before you go into the room, always PPE, PPE, PPE. Even if the patient came disconnected, even if, you know, patient is desaturating, I cannot stress this enough. We need you in the front line. We don't need you in a hospital bed. You're not doing anyone any favors if you're in a hospital bed. The patient will be okay. They'll be okay. Don't take your sweet time putting on your PPE, but always put it on, okay? Go in there, reconnect the patient. They'll be fine, okay? They will be fine. So um, the last alarm I wanna talk to you about is the apnea alarm or low respiratory rate alarm if those alarms are ringing. These will be ringing most likely if the patient is getting better on a weaning mode, weaning trial, spontaneous breathing trial, AKA pressure support trial. All three of those trials are like the same thing they're called different things at different hospitals they're the same thing so they're on a spontaneous breathing mode when it says apneic that just means the patient's getting tired not doing well on the spontaneous breathing trial call the rt hey they keep going apneic especially if they're going apneic multiple times that just means you know what like we're gonna have to try again tomorrow you know so like the patient's too tired they're not strong enough to breathe on their own yet okay so that's what you would do for the apnea alarm. That's what you would do, low respiratory rate alarm. Hey, I don't think the patient's doing very well on the spontaneous breathing trial. Um, you know, can you come check out the patient and see what see what you can do, okay? We'll come, assess, we'll help you out, we'll help the patient, no worries, okay? So I think these tips and tricks are gonna be really beneficial for you as a new critical care nurse. Welcome to the team, you know, 
thank you so much for stepping up into the role. And um, I really hope these tips and tricks help shorten that learning curve for you and make you a little bit more comfortable taking care of an intubated patient, okay? So I have written here a table of all of these things. You can find the link for the PDF underneath this video. And I, you know, welcome you to share it, welcome you to share this video with all of your other friends in acute care nursing who are going to step into the role of ICU nurses. And I wish you guys the best, okay? PPE, 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 every time, all the time, okay? Y'all have a good one, okay? Have fun out there. Out there. <laughs>